Okay, so that's it for metformin, the most widely used drug. I guess if I were to put a summary statement on this, and I didn't intend to say this, so we'll see how it comes out. Um, my view of metformin is generally favorable if you don't exercise. If you can exercise, then do, and, and then be a little more wary of the metformin. All right, now the next, one of the next most common interventions for diabetes is insulin therapy itself. Now, of course, insulin therapy is critical and life-saving for people with type one diabetes, but it ends up being life-threatening, if you will, in someone with type two diabetes, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Of course, the, the justification now and the rest of the conversation will be framed in the context of type 2 diabetes um, and generally is, unless I say otherwise. Um, the view with insulin, the justification for insulin therapy in type 2 diabetes is based totally on the glucose-centric paradigm, that if your view of type 2 diabetes is that we need to lower glucose at all costs, then you would say, why not? Let's give them an insulin syringe and have them shoot that insulin straight into their veins to lower their glucose, and it will lower their glucose. But unfortunately, there are complications. But before I get into that, some, there are lots of different types of insulin, rapid acting, short acting, long acting. Um, some of the long acting, which are the more common ones, they have the, they end with the term R gene or gene as a suffix at the end of some of the drug classes. So you'll like glargine. Um, they are, uh, these are drugs that are, well, they're, they're insulin. They come into the body and they're just going to act like insulin. And so no surprise that um, there's a risk of reducing your blood sugar a little too quickly. So hypoglycemia is a common concern. Of course, we've talked previously about body fat changes. It's no surprise that the moment you put a diabetic type one or type two on insulin therapy, they're going to gain fat mass. They're going to gain weight and that will mostly be fat. A fascinating study was published out of Japan a number of years ago that looked at insulin injection sites. You've heard before that if you're if there's a diabetic on insulin therapy, they need to rotate their injection sites. The reason for this is that insulin promotes the growth of fat cells so well that they will end up getting these exaggerated fat blobs um, in their body. So the study out of Japan actually conducted a biopsy of the fat, and they measured the fat at the site of the injection where the body had kind of gotten this little bulb of fat. And then they measured a fat biopsy just a few centimeters away at a site that was still in the same overall fat depot, but not getting the direct injection of insulin. And they found that the fat cells were about 10 times bigger by volume at the site of the insulin injection. I mean, it's just absolute proof positive of insulin's effect on fat cells and ultimately promoting growth. Now, beyond the inconvenience of gaining weight, there are true um, dis chronic disease concerns, all of which has been shown admittedly through correlational studies in humans. Um, but the first is a heart disease risk that insulin therapy in type 2 diabetes is associated with an in increased heart uh, cardiovascular risk. And there's this dose-dependent association. So the more insulin someone has to inject in order to keep their glucose in check, which is to say another way, the more insulin resistant you are, and now you're pushing your insulin up to these almost super physiological levels, um, then the more likely you are to die from heart disease. And this is directly contributing to hypertension, dyslipidemia, atherosclerosis, and more. So uh, again, um, giving the type 2 diabetic insulin is going to increase their risk of heart disease. There's also an increased risk of cancer. Now, I speak about cancer very, very delicately because there's so much we don't understand about cancer. But once again, there's this dose-dependent risk that as insulin dose requirements are going up in the type 2 diabetic, so too does the risk of cancer mortality. And then third and final is a risk of Alzheimer's disease, that there's evidence to suggest that if you put a type 2 diabetic on insulin therapy, the risk of Alzheimer's disease goes up. There's a couple different studies that have been published on that topic over the past couple decades.